feeder, set it for 600. You see current, and we'll go ahead and we'll test this bad boy out and see if we're dead. All right, looks like we're dead. No voltage. See nothing happening. So, just kidding. All right, so now we know it's dead and we're safe to work with that. Okay, so we can go ahead and disconnect these from each other. All right, and there goes that. Now we have the electrical cable. We'll just bring it out here, out of our way. Save your wire nuts. gonna move now we want to disconnect our soft copper line that's making up the water supply now even though we have the water come shut off my flashlight. even though we have the water shut off from the inside there's gonna be residual water on this line and the same thing's gonna happen when we disconnect the the drainage tube the drainage tube gets disconnected from under the sink so I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna disconnect this line but what I'm gonna do I'm going to use this little paper tray, a paper tray, paint tray, to help me collect the water that may pop out of there when it starts spinning off that nut. Be prepared to like have no room at all as you can see this is not simple task okay. should be able to get it to a point like I did just now you can disconnect it this is where also you're going to find out if your shut off doesn't work. It's coming, it's a coming. Lucky. Minimal water coming out of here, if any at all. So we're good to go on that. All right, now we gotta go under the sink, and we're gonna disconnect the drain hose. Okay, so here's the drain connection. You can see the hose goes up, rides up, makes a drip loop so that the water stays down in this end. So we're gonna have a lot of water in this end. Um, but most likely what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna go ahead and reuse this hose. Uh, the reason why I'm disconnected it from here is so that I can pull it out and get to it better from the back of the dishwasher. So right here is a little clamp and it's connected to a garbage disposal. Loosen up the clamp and then we just simply pull this off. Okay, a little bit of residual water, we'll catch it in a bucket, if, if there's any, there we go, a little bit, no biggie, into the sink you go, it's going to smell, Ugh, and it does, okay, so now we'll move to getting the dishwasher out from under the cabinet. Okay, so now we want to get to disconnecting the dishwasher. If you look underneath here, you'll see these tabs. These tabs are screwed right into your countertop. 
and that's what secures this in. The feet down here are adjustable so that you can raise and lower depending on the height of your counter. And that's how you get this up tight and working properly. You also want it to be able to pitch back a little bit. We'll get into that a little bit later. So just very simply just, just connect these screws. Put them aside because you can reuse them. side of the pump over here where I can disconnect the the hose and set this bad boy free so this is another clamp style hidden underneath here so you follow your hose right back very simply to another clamp that you'll see. And once again, be prepared for water. Water is going to come out of this thing. And water is gonna smell. Smell, smell, smell. So let me get this disconnected and I'll be right back with you. Okay, so we disconnected the hose. Now we can slide her out freely. You see how I utilize that pan. Oop, and there's water in it, as you can see. Let's get away from the wire. Okay, always keep paper towels on this job because you're gonna have a little bit of water. So now we've exposed. A lot of things here, like their cabinet falling, everything falling out on me from the cabinet. Here's that disgusting, stinky, smelly dishwater. Let's get rid of that bad boy. Have a nice day. All right. All right. First thing I'm gonna do is sweep and clean this out because that's just the. So let me take care of that. We'll be right back. All right, so we're gonna replace this hose now. We're taking off this screw that holds the clamp to the wall. Very simple. Unclamp. Pull this down. And we'll just remove the hose. And then we'll go ahead and put the new hose in. Once I get this out of the way, okay. Now we're gonna introduce the new hose. Okay, and you can see the new hose has the connector right there, right here, where we're gonna put the the tightening strap. And then this has little ridges in here that will connect and make up to the new dishwasher. So pull up, pull your line over. Make sure you have enough so you can make up the connection over here. We'll get back over to here. And we bring this. And we'll make a temporary, temporary little connect there. Just so that we know we have enough. And then I can put the screw back in for... This right here. So now I will clip that back up. Set my screw. And back it goes. Okay. Now we can move to this side. 
here's your drain, here's your water feed, here's your electrical. Okay, next is to move the dishwasher into place so that all these connections, you're close enough to make up these connections. I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna pull it in and I'll be right back. Okay, so what I did is I ran the electrical line all the way under so it won't get in the way. You wanna make sure it goes behind here and straight to the front, okay? And here are your makeups. Here is the, the water feed and your drain. Now this drain is gonna get connected here and then I'm gonna slide this in once that's connected and we're gonna get this close to the, to where you have to make up your water connection up the front of this, okay? So the first thing I wanna do here is I'm gonna make up, this is the piece that connects to the dishwasher underneath. It's just like a, your water hose outside spigot. Just screws right on underneath but this has to connect to your water supply. So what I do is I put a little Teflon tape This helps seal the threads so that you don't get any water leakage through the threads. You shouldn't anyways, but it's a good backup. Now this is a compression fitting. And we're just gonna make sure we don't strip it. Make sure that you're going on straight and that you're fine. Everything's gonna make up fine here. Okay, now I wanna look and I'm gonna make sure that that goes straight up and it does. So I'm going to tighten this up by using my adjustable. I think it's up there, the, the little adjustable wrench. This one, adjustable. I'm going to tighten this up. I'm going to hold it in place. And be careful, this is soft copper. You've got to be gentle with this when you do this. You don't want to twist it. You can pop the line, crack the line. You want to make sure you are dead on. Probably just hold out my hand. Make sure you have a perfect connection here. Snug it right up good and tight. You don't want any leaks. So, feeling pretty confident about that connection. I should be good to go. Now, I'm gonna slide this in a little further so that I can make this up, okay? Now we have our little clamps here that work like this. Just open it right up. Put it over where it's going to go. Slide it all the way on though, because we're not going to put it in place yet. Now we make up, push that bad boy right in. You'll hear it clicking in into these little nubs. Get that right in there nice and snug. And we'll slide this back up. Don't you love when you watch other people's videos and it's edited and it's everything's just so smooth and slides right in and it's perfect? Yeah, I don't do that. I don't do that. I'm going to show you just how much bull crap goes along with this stuff. Something as simple as this. And look at it. I'm having a hard time because I can't get the fullest thing up and over the rubber. All right. Now. Yeah, we're secured. Okay, next part is checking my leg heights. I'm gonna slide it in. We're gonna slide this in. We have adjustable legs. We're gonna make sure that our water feed stays under. It comes underneath the dishwasher from behind. It doesn't get caught on anything. 
and when I come back this will be set in place and we'll go ahead and we'll make up electrical and water connection okay so now where well, we got our legs all set up you, you you twist your legs up to make sure that you come you know to create uh, make up the difference between here and the countertops you're gonna have these tabs that are gonna slide in and those are gonna screw just like you unscrewed the old one but first we're gonna make sure we're level and we're pretty darn good baby we'll level that way you want to level front to back back to front make sure you're good and I'm good so now we want to just make sure that our edges line up equally from side to side you just want it to be even and you don't want this to end up hitting your cabinet door so you just slide side to side we ultimately know you're gonna end up keeping it and that's pretty safe to say it's staying right there we're gonna be perfect right here so now we're gonna now that I know that we can do it we're gonna be good I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna slide in these tabs Again. Double check your clearance again from left to right. Split the difference however you have to. Looks good for my house. Now what I want to do is I want to drill it home. Send the home. We're going to put this into the cabinet. it we don't want to pop through the top we don't want nothing like that happening here okay we'll do the same to the other we'll be right back okay so after we got the legs all set in place and everything's leveled you got it solid you got it secured to the counter with your tabs you got this thing solid in there everything's even and level I'm making up my supply line now. I already went a little bit ahead. I put my Teflon tape on and I'm tightening it by hand. Once it gets a little bit too tight, you just use your little, and you don't want to over tighten it. It's plastic that you're tightening it to. So you don't want to go cranking this thing because you could very easily strip out that plastic thread so we're just gonna nudge it right up you can feel like you're on there pretty good you don't need to really go no more that feels pretty good to me right about there so right about now Jump show, brother. Check it out now. So now before we hook up our electrical feed, what I want to do is I want to turn the water back on and check for leaks. And don't be surprised if you have any. Sometimes that, that not, might not be tight enough because you don't want to crack it, etc. So, and don't forget we still have to make up this connector here for the drain. Uh, in fact, I'll do that now real quick. that off this piece I'm gonna need my you hold this one. can you shine it where I friggin need it thank you buddy I 
I know it's difficult to sit down and hold a camera all day. So, get this bad boy on. Easier said than done, you know. Always a freaking, always one guy in the bunch got to be an asswipe. Make sure you snug it up all the way. There we go. All right, let me see the flashlight. Make sure we're consistent all the way around. Okay, no kinks, we're good. All right, now I'm gonna turn on the water, slowly. Okay, I heard the water feed, came on. No leaks here, shouldn't be really, didn't have to disturb that at all. Let me check up on the cup lines here. And we look good underneath here, no water, nothing coming out. The true test is when we start it and we run it for a cycle. Okay, guess what's next? The electrical, what everybody's been waiting for, I'm sure. Screw this bad boy. Of course, it's the wrong size. Okay. All right, now we're gonna send this line back. You don't want to cut it short because you can see how you really, if you're gonna change out a dishwasher, how you you have really not a lot of space to get in there. So by having a lot of feed, extra feed, it helps a lot this way. So we'll send that through. Okie dokie, so now, this is your ground right here, okay? What we're gonna do is you're gonna take your bare wire, your ground wire, and we're gonna wrap it around this bad boy. Feed it right through here. Sure it's gonna stay in the box. Tighten that up good and snug. Alright, now can get that out of the way a little bit. And then it's pretty simple from here. You don't really need to know too much electricity. 
here as far as black goes to black and make up your wire nut connections black goes to black push them all the way into the bottom so you feel it hold that wire tight and spin spin baby spin okay So the hardest part of probably all of this is leveling it, getting those legs set, making sure it's leveled, making the connection, because you don't want this thing rocking and rolling on you when you start it up, but it'll make a lot of noise. So you kind of want to make sure, you know, that you really got it level. Pay particular attention to that. And um, like I said, front to back, you want it level and uh, shouldn't have an issue. If you find that your countertops are really high and the legs aren't reaching, you could use a wooden shim. Uh, I've, I brought wooden shims with me. I didn't end up needing them. But this is a shim. And you can see it goes from zero. Well, not zero, but a sixteenth of an inch to a quarter. And you slide it right under the leg so that the leg will you know, sit on top of it and you can snap off what you need. Or you can leave it if you don't need to snap it. Um, I didn't need any shims here because the countertops are actually installed to the right height they weren't Mickey Mouse in Alrighty. so now I've made up my power connections and what I like to do with my power once I do that so I still like to wrap electrical tape around it and we'll go ahead and take care of that right now get the electrical tape We're almost done kids Daddy's almost done. Gonna come home. Another day, another dollar, and still broke. What are you gonna do? Take off your socks and shit in your shell. So you can see what I'm doing here is I, I like to just make it nice and clean. Connect that. I start at the wire with the tape, I wrap, the two, wrap it around the two wires, and then I work my way up to the nut. And I make it a little tight, pull it as I go. And then, we're all set with that. We can go ahead and put the cover back on. <laughs> and then we'll flick that switch downstairs again and get our power on and then the true test is to run the cycle and see where we go from there All right. okay closing the door on the electrical and I got a screw that keeps jumping for its life it doesn't want to go it wants to die Okay, so we're going to leave this panel open on the bottom here because we're going to go turn the power back on. Okay, all right, nice and clean always. All right, we'll be right back. I'm going to go turn on that power. Okay, we're installed, the power's on. I left the piece out at the bottom. Now make sure you pull everything out of there. A lot of these dishwashers come with wrappers and styrofoam that will hold everything in place. Double check, make sure there's nothing hindering anything in here before you run your test. All right, we wanna make sure the shut's nice. You hear that click? Okay. And then, I don't know how to do this, so we'll just do select normal, um, high temp. And we'll start. Give it a minute. We'll just test it out. We're gonna hear it click on. It's gonna 
make a couple sounds on you. And then this is where when you'll start to hear the water fill, you'll actually hear it spraying inside. And this is where you want to make sure, because this is where the pump over here is actually going to stop pumping. We want to make sure we don't have leaks. You never know, it could even be from the manufacturer. I've put in all kinds of things, dishwashers, hot water tanks. Once you're done installing it, you find out that there's a problem from the manufacturer. That's just the ball buster. Because now what you're going to do, and it's unfortunate for the client, they're going to have to pay for your time. It's not your fault. So you'd have to pull it out, go get another one, etc. So we'll sit here, and there it goes. I don't know if you can hear it. Come close with that mic. Maybe they can hear it. I can hear it spraying inside. It's filling up. Okay, so what I'm gonna do, what I'm gonna do is, so you don't have to sit here all day, you'll run the thing through, you test it through the whole cycle. While this is running, I'm gonna go ahead and clean up my tools, clean up the house, make everything nice around it. It's kicking on, I can hear it, beautiful sound. And uh, I'll come back at the end of the cycle, make sure there's no water underneath, because we also wanna make sure it's draining properly. But I think so far so good, we might, have a perfect A here. I'll be back. All right. Now you saw the mess when I first pulled that out. You know, plumbers may not clean it for you. They may look at that and like, that's not my job. But they're just gonna throw the dishwasher in. I have a little bit more class than that. Not only am I gonna leave it, this place in better condition, but it's even gonna smell nice. So I'm swept up, we got rid of all our garbage. Make everything nice and clean. We've completely checked 100%. You can tell the drain, because what happens is that drain hose right here, underneath that we just connected, when this starts draining, you'll be able to see it right here. And I've already double checked that. I know it's perfectly fine. I don't see any water leak anywhere from this at all. This bad boy's still running its cycle. No water anywhere. This is still running. No water underneath. There it goes for like the third spin cycle, or whatever the heck it's called. Well, I'm all set, my friends. We're gonna go ahead and put this case back on. This covers the front with a couple little lock nuts here. They go in, screw in into the holes, and uh, that's all she wrote. Ladies and gentlemen, is it for today. Mr. Fix-It, have a nice day.